What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are here with the first episode of our NHL 23 franchise mode. And as you can see, we will be taking over. We will be taking the reins of the Montreal Canadiens. Team that hasn't had much success in recent years, but we're going to see if we can change that. You know, I came home yes, or I came home today after my second workout of the day was feeling good, and I was like, you know what? Today's the day. Today's the day we start up the franchise mode. I've been thinking about starting it up for a couple weeks now, but I was like, nah. Today's the day. We are going to do it today. So, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, if you enjoy the Montreal Canadiens, or if you enjoy anything else particularly about this video it would be utmost appreciated if you could like and subscribe to the video and leave your comments about what you would like us to do with the team throughout the season in the off season with the draft everything that you can think of i love having people come around and give give me their opinion on what they think that we should do but as long as that sounds good to you we're going to jump right into it and for anybody that is new here, well, first off, thank you so much for checking the video out. But second off, the Montreal Canadiens, the reason we chose them is because for some reason, they were the team we used last year, of course, but for some reason, the four total fans that I have, quote unquote fans, but the people that actually watch my videos, or I did in the past at least, were all Montreal Canadian fans. So I figured, you know what, got to show some love to the boys up there because, you know, they... They gave a lot of support last year um, to the series and to the channel, so giving back a little bit of them, trying to bring a Stanley Cup back to Montreal, where God knows they've had plenty of them before, but we're going to try and get them some more. So with that being said, in this episode, we're going to just take a little run through the team, like the lines and stuff, um, look at the contracts, tell you my plan for essentially the next year of this team, and then just... Pretty much that's it. We're going to jump right into the simulation after that. That should take maybe 10 minutes, and then we're just going to jump right into the simulation. Theoretically, I think we can get up to the trade deadline, and then I'll stop it at that point because I'll give people on YouTube um, the chance to just give me their input, just tell me what they would like us to do in terms of uh, selling players, keeping them to the draft, this, that, and the third, looking for prospects, bringing in draft picks um, for this season and all of that stuff. Um, so I'm going to give them a chance to do that. But yeah, so that's the plan. Go through the team and then jump right into the simulation up to the draft. With that being said, we can jump right in here to contracts and look a little bit at uh, what we got going on. So up here on the main roster, our big boys, Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, the future of this team in real life and with us. Cole Caulfield is due for a contract extension this year, which is going to be a pretty penny. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a cornerstone of this team, so we might as well sign him to a big deal. I'm not going to do that yet, although it's not a bad option because we could get him medium elite for six years. We could get him for just above eight mil, um, taking off the, taking a little bit off the asking price. Other than that, we have Kirby Doc, who um, is a good player too. Definitely will be a good for this team. Going down, Christian Dvorak, again, a good player that we definitely, um, he's 26, so this is probably his last year to grow, but he is medium top six. And when you see the lines that we have set up, I already took care of the lines. I think you'll agree with me when I say, I think we can get him up to an 85, 86 this season and going into next season. And then other than that, it kind of falls off on the main roster. You just get into bad contracts and the Jonathan Anderson or J Josh Anderson, Jonathan Druin, Evgeny Dadanov, Brendan Gallagher, Sean Monahan. It's just a bad contract. Sean, uh, Mike Hoffman, like this con this team just has a lot of bad contracts and a lot of poor defensemen. And then looking in the system, of course, we have last year's um first overall pick in Uri Slavkovsky, hopefully the power forward of the future here to put on that left wing with Suzuki, with Cole Caulfield. That would be absolutely amazing. And then we also have to sign Jesse Yolinen too this year, um, who's a medium top six, 22 years of age. We might be able to, looks like, we might be able to get him at eight by two mil right away. 
at 22 years. I mean, I'm going to do that just because. I'm going to do that just because. Because that's a good price. And if he grows at all, then his draft value or his trade value will shoot up exponentially. So you know what? Right here, I'm going to get it done. Bang. We're making, we're getting things done. Uh, we got Misak and Beck, mid prospects. Um, and then we get down here to some of the defensemen. And we do have some good um, defensemen prospects in the system. Norlander, 22 years of age, 75 overall. Not bad. Caden Gooley, 20, 75 overall. Baron, again, another 75, 20. These guys are young. They're good overalls, and they're top four defensemen. And then coming down a little bit farther, I know we have another somebody. Where'd he go? Oh, here we go. Josh Harris. Jordan Harris. Damn it. I did that last year, too. High top six, already a 78. He could. I had him in the NHL roster, which I'll show you in a second when we go to the lines, but... I thought with how bad we're going to try and be bad this year, try and get a top five pick. And I don't want that to affect his growth because he can jump up to an 80, 81. And then we'll see, we'll begin to see time on that third defensive pair going into next year. Um, whoops. I hit B by accident, but that's fine. Other than that though, we don't have anything crazy going on in terms of prospects. We got a couple in the AHL, a couple in the NHL, and then we don't really have anything in terms of goalies. So that can be an area um, that we look to. We have Caden Primo, who isn't a whole lot. But here we go. Here are the lines for you. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I said that I think we can go Christian Dvorak a good bit in his last year of real growth. Um, this guy, they get a plus five, which is going to be huge for their development, hopefully. Um, you know, they're not the highest rated first line to begin with, but this plus five hopefully should allow them to really do some damage this year and hopefully not be hurt by the team's poor performance. I mean, Dvorak two-way playmaker sniper works out perfectly. Get down to the second line here. We have Kirby Doc, who hopefully was a player of the future. He has decent chemistry with this team as well. Oh, um, one thing I did want to say is I did, um, we are going to look, this coach has pretty good chemistry with the team, honestly. I was going to say that we're going to look for a coach that has good chemistry, but this one already has it, and it's with our young guys that we wanted to have. Even Jonathan Druan has decent chemistry. So we might be keeping this coach long term, who knows. But I did sign a coach for the AHL that matches up exactly with the chemistry fittings as our NHL coach so that when the time comes um, and we have guys in the AHL, <clears throat> excuse me, we can see exactly where they fit into our NHL roster and just grow through the system. That's the way I like to do it. I know that other people like to do that as well. Um, but yeah, but then we have the playmaker, playmaker, two-way forward combo down here. I don't love that, but this is the only way to get Kirby Doc um, some real chemistry anywhere in the lineup. I mean, I'm not putting him on the fourth line. So, like, it was hard, honestly. Um, and then, again, moving down the line, Brendan Gallagher isn't really a future piece. He's on a very bad contract um, for his skill level and for his age. I don't know how Canadian fans feel about keeping him. If the price is right and the time comes, I'm open to moving him. But you guys can let me know how you feel about it. And then, other than that, third line is as meh as you could ever get. Um, Josh Anderson, terrible contract. Absolutely terrible. Sean Monahan, bad salary, but he's in his last year. And Evgeny Dadanov, bad salary, but he's in his last year of it. So what I'm thinking going into this year is that Monahan and Dadanov are immediately, we're going to try and flip them at the trade deadline, which will be episode two, um, for really anything we can get. If we can, I'm hoping that they can be somewhat successful this year. 82, 83 overall rated. It's not bad. I'm hoping that we can maybe flip them for a mid pick, like third, or maybe a low end prospect, um, something of that. But essentially, I'm going into this year predict or predicting, planning to sell both of these guys at the deadline. Let me know what you think about that as well. Josh Anderson, again, I'd love to grow his draft stock a little bit, but it's just. Again, no chemistry here. I don't know how this line's going to perform on their own. Third line checking line, I mean, eh. We'll see how it goes. And if the price is right, if the time comes, obviously, I think all Canadian fans agree with me. But I'm open to, very open to selling him. And then, of course, Mike Hoffman as well. Two years left at $4 million. It's not the worst, but it's pretty bad. 
Um, he doesn't really fit the line. He actually fits the lines pretty well. But he's a fourth liner. You can't be paying a fourth liner four and a half million dollars. It's just you can't be doing that. Um, but he gets us the plus one for this year. So he might be more of a guy that we trade at the draft, right? And then Rem Pitlick here, 25 years of age, medium top six. So he can definitely grow this year to maybe an 82-83 and then be a third line checking forward for us after we get rid of Dadanov and uh, Sean Monahan, who just w did not work out. He also fits the bottom nine chemistry decently well. So if we can get him to grow, then he can definitely be a bottom six checker for us. I'm definitely open to that. Jake Evans, also 26. Medium top six potential. Not bad. Fits the chemistry well as well. So honestly, we have some nice pieces. We have a couple fillers in there like Hoffman, like Anderson, Monahan, Dadanoff, and Gallagher. But other than that, I do like the seven, eight, nine other forwards that we currently have. Uh, or not seven, eight, nine, but like uh, five, six, seven forwards that we have. And then moving to the defensemen, um, I also already made two trades just trying to get it done and over with um, for the sake of just like hurrying up through this so it's just not wasting time i traded for pat nemeth and paul Ledoux. um i can show you those trades right now actually before i continue any farther so going into what is it like activity or something like that yeah we'll just look at the activity here we should be able to just see um player and pick trading yeah so here we go so we trade uh, I don't remember his first name, but his last name's Baron, the defenseman. Um, they were 78 and 75 rated. I really wanted to have Gordon Harris in the NHL lineup this year because he does fit the chemistry, but he's a 78, and this team's going to be bad, and I don't want to hinder his progress, um, his development going forward. So I decided to uh, make the trade for both of these guys, like, yeah, two years at the basically the veteran minimum. And then... Yeah, two years at 2.7. As a team, we're not currently really worried about cap space. Again, we're going to be able to open up at least 10 or 11 mil. We have to sign, uh, what's his name, Caulfield. But we're going to be able to open up 10, 11 mil with um, the trades of Dadanov and Monahan, as long as we can dump them. And with the possibility of Josh Anderson and Mike Hoffman as well, I think we'll be fine. Um, but yeah, nothing too pretty here with the... Um, with the defensemen, all past their prime, essentially, nobody high rated, nobody I really see us keeping for much longer, maybe just re-sign Joel Edmondson, just because he fits the chem decently, um, David Savard, again, maybe, I think he's in the last year, no, he says three years at three and a half, so he is a little bit overpaid, but he fits the chem well, so if he plays well, then I'm fine keeping him, same thing with Edmondson, Matheson is on a very bad contract for his, um, Fours overall, but fits the chemistry. We'll see where we're at at the deadline. I'll see what you guys say, this, that, and the third. Um, see where we're at the deadline and at the draft with them. Uh, Chris Weidman fits the second pair very well, making little to no money, and is 80 overall. He gets the job done for this year when we're looking to get a good draft pick to begin with. And then again, Paul Ledoux does not fit the third pair. I was told that he was when I traded for him. Um, it had the little four bars, and it said third pair or whatever it says there. Um, so they lied to me a little bit there, but whatever, it's fine. He'll get the job done. 30 years of age, um, not expecting anything. And then the same thing with Pat Nemeth, big 6'4 body, very good, um, very good stay-at-home defenseman, kind of he'll throw the body around and stuff like that. Don't expect anything crazy from him. And then in net, we have not much going on as well. We have Jake Allen, who is in the last year of his deal, probably will not be coming back to the team Unless it's unless we're gonna be bad again next year, um, whatever. That's kind of eh. Sam Montembeau, medium fringe starter, not making much money. It it is what it is. And then we go to scratched here, and it's just Michael Pozzetta. I mean, he's low. Or he's medium bottom six. Doesn't really fit much chemistry. He's kind of our thirteenth forward. Although I do play with injuries off anyway, so it does not really matter too too much. Um, injuries are just excessive in this game I feel and if you guys would like injuries on then please let me know and I can definitely turn them on if that would be more entertaining for you but I just typically prefer to play with them off I'll change it up every once in a while sometimes I'll turn them on sometimes I'll turn it off but this is also what our power play looks like um, we have our four main forwards all on it with a plus three for some reason they all have neutral and poor chemistry but this gets us a plus three god knows how 
We have no offensive defenseman. This is where I wanted Jordan Harrison, two-way defenseman. He did fit the chemistry a little bit, and we got the plus three with him as well. But, again, didn't want to hinder his progress, so Chris Weidman will get the job done for us. Now, I actually cannot do any better than this. I really tried every combination I could. Um, Jonathan Drouin, unfortunately, drew the short straw from that group of five forward, or four forwards in that first one. Um, I really wanted to put him on there, but I just couldn't justify it with we're trying to grow everybody else. Um, he's not going to grow much at all. Um, so I figured if anyone's going to draw the short straw, it's going to be him. And then just Galley, Hoffman, Dadanov. Like, these are, we got two snipers, two way defensemen, and a two way forward with a playmaker. I don't know why it's minus three, to be honest. I feel like that's a bit excessive, but the, I promise you, I tried every combination in the book and could not get anything. Um, and then four man power play, I adjusted to what I thought it needed to be. It was as good as I could get it. Um, that doesn't really matter. And then here, we just have, again, a couple of two-way forwards and defensemen here. Get us a plus one. Again, trying to grow Rem Pitlick, so we're going to get him a little bit of ice time here with this situation. Um, yeah, going down. Dvorak and Evans, again, wouldn't be bad to grow either of them. So we're getting them some more ice time. And then defensemen, are right, you get it. And then just, <laughs> this is just whatever. Um, I didn't really know who else to put here, to be honest, because I don't think, like, Mike Hoffman's going to fit here because he's a sniper as well. Um, yeah, so whatever. We'll throw Mike Hoffman out there. Or we'll throw Josh Anderson out there just to get him some more ice time. Maybe it'll boost his um, boost his draft or trade value, whatever. Yeah, same thing with the three, man. But here we are. Um, again, I saw our big guns, Suzuki and Caulfield, defensemen, best I could give. And then same thing here, Dvorak and Doc, best forwards with what I could give on defense. And then Monahan and Hoffman, this is just kind of whatever. Three on three follows the same precedent. Our two big guns, our other two forwards, and then the other forwards that we're trying to get some ice time and either grow or increase their trade value. And then extra attackers, Caulfield and Suzuki, shoot out as follows. Goalies you saw, and that's that. So then taking a quick look at the AHL lineups, of course, we have our big gun. Hopefully future first-line left winger, 30-goal scorer, Uri Slavkovsky. This is the best I could get. Him was a plus one with Danik Martel and Emil Heinemann. Um, Emil is only 20. He's a medium top six, so we're definitely trying to grow him as well. And then we have Jesse Yolinen. This is the bet. Excuse me. This is the best that I could get him. Him um, with Brandon Gignac, Gigne, whatever. I don't know how you could possibly say his name. High bottom six. He's a sniper. He helped fit the chemistry. It is what it is. Nate Schnarr, low top six. 23, 72 could possibly end up being a bottom six guy for us in the future. Um, I don't know. He fits the top three chemistry pretty well, so he could grow to possibly be a third line checking forward for us. So, what are his faceoffs actually? Yeah, his faceoffs are pretty good, so I actually kind of want to get him in the center spot, have more taking, more faceoffs. And then we just have Paul Byron, who is making way too much money, but he's in the last year, so it helps us, whatever, it's fine. He'll be gone at the end of this year. Um, as long as you guys are okay with that. And then we have Mitchell Stevens, Jan Misak, uh, Boric, Belzeal, and Teasdale. Again, nothing really going on in this bottom six. Could not make any chemistry matches whatsoever. So we put Misak. We just threw Misak in there. He's only a 68, but he's still medium top six with sniper play type. And he's got decent potential and stuff like that. So I figured, why not? We might as well throw him in there. I think I put him on the power play. But this power play absolutely gets zero Um chemistry so it wasn't really worth it to begin with and then going on to the defenseman again we have some really nice pieces here to be honest madison bowie is whatever he fits chemistry he gets that he helps us with that but then we have matthias norlander who yeah i mean good chemistry he's young he's 22 years of age two-way defenseman so i don't love that i like to follow the more offensive defensive defenseman precedent but i mean hey, if he fits the chemistry with the team he fits the chemistry with the team same thing with jordan harris doesn't fit it perfectly well so when we do bring him up it might have to be good enough that he can play that second pair because that's really all that he fits and then we have justin Barron, that was his name i couldn't remember it earlier who fits the chemistry very well so him again like they're both eh we'll see about Barron, but Harris will probably be in the NHL next year. And then even Alex Green, medium top six. He is 24, but he fits the chemistry well, so we might as well take the chance on him. And then we have Caden Gooley, who's 20 years of age, 
75 already, medium top four, another defense or two way defenseman who fits the chemistry basically the same way that Harris does. So it's not great, but it, it, it it's not bad. It's worth taking the chance on, uh, growing him. And then on the power play, we have absolutely zero chemistry. I could not make any combination work. So this is what I threw out there. I threw two uh, sniper or two snipers, a playmaker, a power forward, and then Harris. Just basically guys we want to get ice time. Might as well give it to the, the guys trying to grow and see what they can do with it again. And here, again, trying to grow Schnarr, trying to go Misak, Norlander, and then just Bowie fit. So was double green, so I tried giving him the ice time to make it through. Um, and then Bork was – he's a sniper, so I thought he might be able to help this uh, actually get us some goals. But, yeah, that was about as good as I could get with that. And then penalty kill was fine again. Mitchell Stevens – 25, top nine, like he's he's fine two-way forward. And then, again, we're trying to grow Emil Heineman. Um, he does not fit the power play whatsoever, but he does fit the um, penalty kill, so we'll get him time there, along with Gooley and Bowie. And then we lose chemistry again. We're trying to grow Schnarr, so I figured we might as well give him some time. But then we have Baron and Green in the back end with Byron. And then penalty kill, th- was Stevens on both? Okay, no. Was Stevens on multiple? Yeah, Mitchell Stevens was on two so we're just going to take him out for somebody anybody else really because at that point it doesn't really matter um teasdale's already on this line just give belzeal the time whatever um teasdale and then norlander and harris on the pk because they're both on the power play actually is wait is norlander on the power play norlander is on the power play so we put both of those guys on the Third penalty kill, just because we're not going to force. We don't want to give him too much ice time. I don't know how. We'll see how it goes the first month. But then again, four on four, brought our big guns up front. And then the other guys are trying to grow in Gignac and Orlander. And then, again, Yolinen, Harris, and Green. Three on three follows the same precedent. You get the idea, but I'll flip through it really quick for you. There you go. Goalies, Caden Primo, 23 we are actually he's only I mean he's on three he's got three years left he'll be an RFA at the end of this contract he'll be 26 but I mean if he grows into something then fantastic um we'll see how much he grows this year maybe he'll be our NHL backup next year maybe we'll keep him in the AHL maybe just stat pad him a little bit who knows and then again 32 year old Kevin Pullen is his backup but then scratch we don't have anything great going on here again we do have okay we had somebody but I don't know where he went um I'm also using updated rosters, like edited rosters that have some prospects. Like I know in terms of the Flyers, as a Flyers fan, um, Bobby Brink and Cutter Gauthier were um, added into this roster update, like manually added by whoever created this roster. Um, I think I upload, I think I made this my roster about two months ago. But there's also some random, um, random, like, what's the word? created players they're not even real life prospects i don't think i think they're just guys that the whoever um felt like whoever was making the game at the time or making the roster just threw in i don't know why but there are a few oddballs in there that are like that um on the what's it called i can't even think of the word on the NHL roster um, with the moves and stuff. I mean, so yeah, when we get to the deadline, just let me know what you guys think, what you guys want, all of that. Um, and then we'll take care of that stuff in episode two. Anything you guys leave in the comments, we'll take care of in episode two. But yeah, other than that, we're just going to jump right into the sim here. I'm going to sim and check the stats after preseason just to look in terms of, um, just to see in terms of, how the ice time is allocated, make sure, I mean, oh yeah, Arbor Zheka, I know he's on the Canadians in real life, I looked at the free agents, and he was, um, he was a free agent in the game, in this game, and I know he's on the Canadians in real life, so I was like, all right, I mean, I might as well go out and sign him, like, I might as well, right, um, so, I, yeah, I just made him, like, a basic three-year entry-level offer, and, uh, as you can see here, he accepted it, um, I don't know if he was in the game already or if he was added by whoever the person was that created these rosters, but yeah. So now we have Arbor Jekka on the team. Um, so as you can see here, we had a good preseason. Hopefully, I mean, it'd be great if we made the playoffs, but I don't see that being our future or being um, happening for us. 
but if it does, then, I mean, I guess we'll run with it, but, um, yeah, this year we're definitely looking for a top five pick. Going down, looking at the rosters here, I mean, 23 minutes is a lot for Christian Dvorak, so we'll see about that one. Suzuki, 24 minutes, man. Oh my God, these guys are playing a lot. Okay, 20 minutes. That's kind of what I was hoping for from these second line, from these first line guys. Galley at 15, that makes sense. Doc at 16, okay. Druan at 15, okay. But Druan at a shit ton of points. 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 11 minutes. Jake Evans was at 10. 10 for Rem. And 10. I mean, everybody was a plus player in terms of our forwards. 22. Okay, that's good. 22, good again. I kind of wanted to spread out the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, This I'm actually perfectly fine with how this ice time was allocated in the defenseman. Our top line... Okay, Jake Allen had a good preseason. Montembeau didn't get into a single game. But um, I was kind of hope... Did not want our guys, our top level guys, to be playing as much as they are. I mean, on the penalty kill, I mean, maybe I should take Dvorak out here and put, like, Jake Evans. Oh, shit, Jake Evans is on this line twice now. Um, Okay, hold on, let me see something real quick. What about Josh Anderson? Or wait, what about Galley? Okay. I mean, he's good enough to fit the line. 79 faceoffs. That's fine. I mean, maybe this will help the... And then we have Josh Anderson. And then we might as well just throw uh, Jake Evans out here again. Because he's a fourth line guy. Doesn't get a lot of minutes. Doubt we'll even have this PK line out here that much. But maybe that will help the ice time a little bit without having those guys on the PK. Um, I want them to grow. I just don't want them to have a stupid amount of ice time. I would prefer if it was under like 22 minutes a night. Um, don't really want them in the 23-24 range, but if they are, it's, again, it's a video game, so it's not actually going to mean that much. But yeah, guys, I think this is the roster we're going to head into the season with. I think I'm going to keep the lines this way. Let's take a look at the power play, see how that did. Um, Suzuki. Um, Preseason. Okay, so the power play. Okay, they might not have scored a single goal on the power play. They might have just been cracked on Yeah, Okay. So it appears we did not actually score a single goal on the power play, which is weird. So we actually have good... We actually have good, like, chemistry for this power play line. Oh, brother. Help me. So there's no shot. He has a power play point. He has, a, he has two shorthanded points, though. Jesus Christ. Watch. I, I, I guarantee you this line somehow scored a power play goal, man. I just guarantee it. It probably would have been Hoffman. Oh, shit, I didn't want to click that. Two power play goals. Of course. The line that has minus three chemistry scored two power play goals for us, man. Oh, my God. This game. But, yeah, guys, we're just going to jump right into the regular season right now. We're going to go up to draft. If you have anything that you want to leave, be sure to leave in the comments. Like and subscribe. Do all that stuff. It is greatly 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 appreciated but yeah we are going to jump right in i also did scouting already don't want you to think i didn't for, didn't do that but i did scouting yeah i did scouting for up to december so when december comes around i will do that again i will skip past it for the video but i will do that again but other than that we are just going to simulate we're just going to start the regular season up here all right guys so here we go we are ready for our first game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, we're just going to go month by month, look at the stats after each month, look how the team's doing. Again, I don't expect a whole lot, but I don't want I want to make sure that the guys we're trying to grow aren't doing terribly that it's going to affect their growth. Other than that, that's really all we care about for this season. We're just trying to get a good draft pick. So, yeah, we're just going to go month by month and really just see how it goes. All right, guys, so that is the end of month one. And, of course, as this game likes to go, we are 5-3-1. And, and currently are not even close. We are not even in the playoffs. But we, of course, are above 500. Because just why not? <laughs> um, yeah. So, of course, just as I got done saying that, I turn injuries off because they are very annoying in this game. Chris Weidman, 
got injured in that first game against Toronto. I just ended up substituting that 76, some 76, like shooting him in or whatever his name was. Um, cause I was turning injuries off. So I just brought him up and threw him in the lineup. He should be back within like a week or two or something. Weidman. I don't know, but yeah, of course we're above 500 though. Um, I'm going to jump in and look at these, look at the stats a little bit. See how everybody's doing. Make sure the good guys or the top guys. And Suzuki is at again, 20 minutes, 11 uh, points. Ice time's perfect. Cole Caulfield, 11 points. Ice time's perfect. And then we get down to Galley, point per game. Ice time's fine. I mean, I don't really care, but he's taking over that. And then again, Kirby Doc, five assists in nine games, 60 minutes of ice time. I can't argue with that. He's a playmaker. We want him to make some plays. We want him to get, get assists. Jonathan Duran's minus two. We don't love that because he is somebody that I would like to keep for that maybe third line playmaker role. I don't know. He is in a contract year, so it depends on how much he's going to want. But we'll see. Josh Anderson It's only a minus one, so it's not bad. But of course, there's a fine line between being bad to lose being bad and getting the losses, we can get a good draft pick, and our guys play well enough that they have good trade value. And I don't really know how we're going to walk that line with these guys. Um, I mean, minus twos, I can deal with that. That's fine. Jake, okay, our fourth line is cracked. Um, it is absolutely pluses, so Hoffman might be a guy that we keep for the whole year and then deal at the draft or something like that. But yeah, everything looks pretty good this first month. Um, 25 minutes is a lot for Joel Edmondson, but it's fine. He's a defenseman. Defenseman is a little bit more normal for them to play that much ice time. 20, 19. Nemeth, 13, but he's a minus 3. And then again, it's probably because he's out here with Schooneman. Uh, and again, Schooneman was inserted into the lineup because Chris Weidman got hurt the very first game of the season. Just is the reason that I don't like this injuries in this game. I think they're, I just, they're not enjoyable. They make the game not enjoyable. But Jake Allen um, is having an absolutely cracked year, or I should say first month. It was only six games, but he was cracked, and Sam Montebo could not have been any worse, actually. So who knows? If the team starts doing too well, maybe we'll get Sam Montebo some extra starts down the line, um, see how he does with that. But, yeah, um, I think Weidman should be back from his injury in just, like, a week or two. Week, I think it was like November 8th or 9th was the day he was due back. Um, so looking down at the AHL, they are cracked as well. Madison Bowie, eight assists, six one and one. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, because you know, these guys, I hope these guys do as well as they can. Slavkovsky, perfect 20 minutes of ice time, almost a point per game, plus player. That is what we want. Um, Heineman, plus player, three goals. Yo, Lennon. He's got some points and a plus. We can deal with that. Points and plus. We can deal with that. Same thing here. Plus. It's good enough. Plus. Plus. Or was that a plus? Yeah. Plus. Plus. Excellent. Love that. Norlander. Plus player. Bunch of ice time. But plus player here. Excellent. Points and a plus. Points and a plus. Points and a plus. And same thing there. Uh, greens, ice time is a little bit low, but again, is what it is. I'm not going to change what's working. These guys are 6 1 and 1. Caden Primo is also having an absolutely cracked season with Poulin doing well in the backup role as well. So honestly, it looks like everything is going pretty well um, as of now. We are getting some wins, which I don't know how long that'll last. We are not a very good team um, outside of our three, uh, that four, first forward line. Um, but after this next month, I will check the, uh, I will have to redo the, what's it called? Oh God, I can't even think of the word. The scouts, that's what it is. I had to redo the scouts and then we'll also look at how the power play and PK stats are. Cause I think the two month mark is a good sample size for that. And we'll, um, kind of adjust from there. Again, it looks like we were pretty cracked that month. We started on a four-game win streak. Let's see, what did we go that month? We went four and one, five and one, five and two, five two one, six two one, seven two one, eight two one, nine two one, nine two and two. We went nine two and two in that month, man. I am not trying to win games here. I would like to lose. I would like to, like, 
get a good draft pick, man. I really do. But I don't want to do it at the cause of hindering their play. So they're even. I don't know how they're even, but they are. Are they getting power play points or something? A couple. But they're e this first line's even now, man. I don't like that. Why are they only even? Why are they not pluses? Looks like our second line might be crazy. That's why. Well, no, that's not why. That leaves us in a bit of a sticky situation. I'm not sure if my mic was connected there, but yeah. As I was saying, our top line is even. They're not minus, but they're only even. And everybody else um, of our forwards are pluses. Um, so it would actually be like worst case scenario if we were winning games, making the playoffs, and our first line was not in, not plus players. Like, I don't have a problem with us winning games, but, like, it doesn't make sense that we are. Like, Montembeau's garbage, man. Allen's been cracked, so... But we also do. Another important thing is we do have two first-round picks this year. I don't know how exactly, so I cannot think... I could not think of a trade where um, Canada, Montreal got this pick, but we have the uh, Florida Panthers first-round pick. So if the Panthers are doing bad... Like, they are. They're not in the playoffs right now. We might, like, that might be best case scenario. If they're bad, then we, then that can afford us to be good. We can afford to have not a good pick. Because, I mean, right now we're top of the division with games at hand to the guys behind us. So, like, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't really, okay. And our an AHL team shit their pants that month. But, um, I wasn't really planning for a playoff push. Um, but the problem is, if we start to lose, or if we start to win, um, we get to a point where we can't not go for winning now. And we're pretty much, in the next month, going to get close to that line. So, like, goals for in the league, we're in fifth somehow. Goals against, we're, again, like, top ten. Power play, our power play is only 16%. How? Oh, it actually has good chemistry. Our penalty kill is not on here. A penalty kill is not on there either. The hell's our penalty kill? Well, that just means our penalty kill is like kind of going to be middle of the pack. Did I? Miss? Okay, here we are. Eighty-five percent. That's not. It's not terrible, but I would prefer that to be better. And again, dude, like, just cracked at home on the road. Last ten, just absolutely. Winning when I didn't really, didn't really want us to, man. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to think about what to do next, but for right now, I'm going to go do the scouting for the next couple months, and then I will check back with you when I'm done that. All right, guys, so scouting is done. I have taken care of that until April. I think I messed up the months. I think I wanted the first, so I split the scouting into three um, session or three points in the season. I got this, um, the way, this idea or way to do it originally from another NHL YouTuber. I think his name, I think it was Sl No Sleeves or whatever his name is. He's a pop, he's an actual popular one. Um, yeah, I think I should, I think I was supposed to go to January 1st with that instead of December 1st, but it's, it's fine. It's been taken care of until April 1st. So that will be next episode's problem after, um, the trade deadline. But yeah, I really don't, took me about 10 minutes to get that done. I really don't know what to do about our situation of we keep freaking winning. I really don't know what to do because, yeah, I love that. I mean, these guys actually aren't playing that well. I mean, Drew Ann gets us the plus five. So if this line starts to, if this line the next month is a minus, we're going to, um, we're going to insert Drew Ann on this first line. We're definitely going to do that. But other than that, I don't really know what to do. Um, oh, wait, I should check this. See, how, um, I mean, they're plus. Still a plus. They're not really scoring, but all right. Heinen is a minus. Oh, my God. The second line's getting railed. Absolutely. But, man. Okay, so we got to do something about that. We got to find somebody else that fits the chemistry here. Okay, so it looks like that month was a complete fluke. I would prefer to grow... So Misak, of course, of all people, gets us a plus one. Bork gets us a plus one. And Teasdale gets us a plus two. 
But the only thing with that is so works. So only snipers gets a plus one there. But we already have a sniper and a power forward. Mm. I feel like I would rather try Stevens out there. Just because he's a two-way forward. I don't want to put two snipers on the same line like that. See how they're doing. Okay, Norlander got absolutely... He's up to a 76. Bro, how did these guys get shot so much this last month, dude? Okay, so... Okay, so this is a problem. So we're going to make... We're going to make this switch. Calling it now. I'm not going to let them suffer too much. And Caden Primo... I just can't save the puck. He has an 897. He has a 257, but his save percentage is an 897. And Poulin can't do anything to back him up either. So we're going to do that. We also have to put in... What's his name? We have to put uh, Chris Weidman back in. We have to put Chris Weidman back in because he was healthy. I just never put him in because I wanted to lose some damn games. But apparently... They just decided to be cracked. Pat Nemeth, def most defenseman, de defensive defenseman of all time, has nine points right now. Um, yeah, we're going to make this switch back to that. I mean, Matheson's plus eight, plus six, plus nine. I mean, I don't... How did Schoenemann... I mean, Schoenemann even had three points, bro. I mean, I don't really know. Do I... I don't, I don't want to change the lines to hurt us. But, like... I don't really know what else to do. I'm going to sim another month and just honestly hope that we're not as cracked as we are. But if the Panthers start w losing a bunch of games, then I might be more fine with us making that playoff push because then we'll have that lottery pick. But again, I was wanting, I was in the hopes for a really big lottery pick, like a top five pick, not some ninth overall pick. So I don't know. We'll see how this month goes and we will take it from there. Okay, guys, so another month down, and it looks like we were still good. And the Panthers did well that month as well. What were we before this month? I don't remember. Let's see. 3-1-1, Wait, what? How did we have more? Hold on, let me just do this in my head real quick. So, one and one, three and one, three one one, three one two, four one two, four two two, four two three, four three three, five three three, five four three, five five three, five six and three. So we were, we did lose some games there. Um, and then of course we won against can Washington though. Okay, so we were about five hundred that month, I believe. Um. So again, still not where we want to be. I would actually want us to be losing a few more games than this. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the Panthers are not doing bad enough for me to be okay with us winning yet because they're, they look like they're going to be a lottery pick, but they don't look like they're going to be a good one. Okay, so this first line is pluses. That is what is the most important. They are getting some points. Cole Caulfield is 32 points. Thrilled about that. Galley is even. Doc is up to an 82, which is exactly what we wanted from him. This third line, even this third line is plus, man. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, maybe I should, if I replace any of these guys, does it give me, okay, so it doesn't, huh. well, this is a damn predicament, isn't it? I want, I kind of want Rem Pelik to get some more ice time. I do, but I don't want it. I don't want him to be the one that gets starts losing stuff, starts doing bad. I mean, because it's not even like we have guys who are... Like, literally everybody is doing well, just about. Okay, except for Pat Nemeth. Pat Nemeth, I swear, was a plus last month. Um, I mean, like, why is... Mon why is... What's his face? Why is Jake Allen actually doing well, man? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I don't want to split these guys up because... I mean, what if I did this? What if I put Rem Pitlick up there and kind of got him some time up there? But again, I just don't want him to do bad. I want everybody else, I want these other lines to do bad. Okay, I'm going to try that for the month. That leaves this third line without a center, which means that I'm just going to do this. And then I'll put Galley. Oh, shit. All right, we're going to do that. 
see how that goes. And now that leaves this. Okay, Jake Evans can play center. We're going to leave it at that. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to do other than that, though. We're going to, I mean, we'll make those changes and then just kind of take it to the next month and see where we're at. Again, I don't really know. This is a weird spot. I did not actually expect this to stay good. I thought, I understand we got good, but I thought we were going to end up being bad. All right, we're just going to sim another month, and then we're going to check how special teams and stuff are doing, check how the Panthers are doing, and then I think we'll just have, we'll probably just have, like, what, three weeks to sim? Yeah, we'll sim. Ah, we'll only sim the first, like, three days of February, actually, because the deadline's here. So we're just going to sim to the, we'll basically just, yeah. Wait. No, yeah, we have, like, oh, wait, is it in March? Oh, shit, the deadline's in March. Okay, so yeah, we're going to sim up to March 3rd, and then we'll call the video there. But we're going to go, we're just going to go this month and see what happens, I guess. Okay, guys, so another month has passed, and another month we are still doing reasonably well. So this month we went, so 1-1-1, one, 1-3-1, one, and 3-3-1, one, one, three, and one, three, three, and one, three, three two. 432 442 542 642 652 752 if my math is correct there's 752 we went this past month man and at this point we are a legit playoff team i don't know why or how and of course the panthers have now moved into a wild card spot which means they have won some games which oh man damn I can't believe this is actually happening right now. So Rem Pitlick was a plus five going into this month. What is he now? Plus eight, meaning he did better on this line. He's getting more ice time. Everything's good. He's still plus 36 points from Kirby Doc. 22 years of age. Can't ask for any more. 40 points for Jonathan Drouin. Minus one. That's not the end of the world. Minus one. Um, again, 47 plus player. Or... 37, my math was wrong. Suzuki's up to an 87, leading the team in points with 45 and a plus player. Plus 8 with 43 points. I mean, everything is just going right for us right now. I mean, Galley's a 20-goal scorer. Monahan's a plus player. Anderson is a plus player. I mean, we might be able to... I mean, Mike Hoffman on the fourth line has all these goals. He has five power play goals and nine power play points, man. Jake Evans is a plus player, 14 points. Getting dadding off at 10 goals, playing 12 minutes a game, man. Like, I don't actually really, completely honest with you, have any idea what to do with this team because we're not built for the playoffs. David Savard's plus 15. I was, I was worried about us being too bad this year. I was worried about our first line not doing good enough to just progress the way we want them to. But now we're here with the problem of they're doing too good. And it might actually be a problem now, because... Let's just go to the standings real quick, man. Huh. Well, let me see how Laval's doing, actually. I think that's our AHL, right? Laval Rockets? Okay, so they improved massively. 9-1 and one in their last 10. First in their division. Okay, so I don't have to worry about them. We're going to worry about the mother... Uh, Canadians right now. So we're currently third in the division. And at this point in the season, that makes us legit playoff contenders the Panthers are right behind us and we have their first round pick I don't know why or how but we do so power play is only 15% I don't like that PK is only 84% so our special teams aren't great our 5 on 5 must just be nasty man so if we look here we're currently 4th we're 4th in the entire league man we're 3rd we're 2nd in our division but we're 4th where do the Florida Panthers sit Florida Panthers are currently 15th in the league, man. That's how close it is. 57 points. Fifty-seven points to our 62, and I'm pretty sure they have a game at hand. Puts us at fourth in the league. Just that five points. So if we have just one bad, really bad, like we go, like, say this next month we have what, 14 games? Say we go like three, eleven, and three. 10-1 and one or something like that. 
it could drop us down to that spot, but I don't know if I want to do that. Like, if we have a bad month, dish out those guys that we were looking to dish out at the deadline, then we're golden. Like, we could be in a really good spot, but is that worth it when we could make the playoffs? But we're not a playoff team. We're not built for the cup, which is why I am very confused. I also want to look at contracts because I wanted to sign Cole Caulfield in December, but it is now February, and I did not, so I can't imagine how much money he wants. Um... Yeah, give me everybody that has an extension. Dad and Ob, how much do you want? Yeah, I'm not giving you three and a half mil. Jonathan drew in five and a half mil. Resign Jonathan drew for like three to four mil. 83 overall, perfect third line guy. But five, I don't know if I can justify resigning for five million dollars, man. That's one we're definitely not doing right now. Cole Caulfield, holy fuck, what? Dude, what? I should have signed him when we could have gotten him for eight. Sixteen and a half? Why does he think he deserves sixteen and a half million dollars? What? I really wanted to sign him back in the beginning of the season when I saw that we could get him long term for eight million. Damn it, I can't believe I forgot. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Okay, well, it's obviously not going to stay at sixteen million, right? Because that's just absurd. I think, like, McKinnon or somebody, Matthews maybe? I think Matthews might make the most in the league. And he's at, what, like 11 or 12? I'm not paying you fucking $16 million. Monaghan's actually not a bad price. I might re-sign him just to help up his trade value a little bit. Because we can get him at a discount because he wants to re-sign with us. So, I think I might do that, actually. So, two years... I think I might resign him for like two years, but we're not actually going to keep him. We're just going to do this to help his trade stock. Um, but I don't know how much we're going to actually resign him for. So let me do some math here. So we might be able to get him for like, he wants 2.9. We might be able to get him for like 2.6. And I think that's a good mark. And I think that'll help boost his draft stock. Like we're not keeping him next year. I mean, Michael Pizzetta. I mean, he wants to resign, but is it worth it? And he could be another guy that we lock up long term for like 1.75. And even and depending on how much he grows, his cap it's always going to be 1.75. So I like that. Anybody else that's like important that's going to cost us actually decent amount of money? Not really. Yeah, you just want the basics. Um. Yeah, that's about it. So we don't actually really have too many people to resign. Um, both these goalies don't really mean much to me, to be honest, or to the team. And then Jake Allen is on the. Oh, he's oh he's extensions already. He already signed an extension, so we have him for two more years. I did not even know that. Didn't do we have anybody else already signed to an extension? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it does not look like it. Okay. So the only problem looks to be Cole Caulfield. I really wanted to get him at that $8.5 million cause, because he wanted an extension and he was already on our team, we probably could have gone seven years for, like, at the most we could have gotten away with was eight. Like, we could have maybe even gotten away with 7.7 .7 .7 for Cole Caulfield to medium elite, 22 years old, who fits the chemistry very well on this team. So that actually is going to significantly hurt our cap hit, which kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie to you, but it is what it is. I do want to look. I'm going to dish some people at the deadline, and I want to see what kind of – like Mike Hoffman, he actually has some trade value. Sean Monahan actually has some trade value. He might even have a little bit more once – Um. Oh, we never saw if Arbor... We never even put Arbor Zeka in the lineup, bro. Damn. Okay. Well, we'll do that. We'll take a look at that real quick. Um, Dadanov has a little bit. So, like, Dadanov and Monahan are the big guys that I really want to um, just dish out at the deadline. But Monahan might be a guy we want to do now while... Because we're winning. But didn't we just move him to the fourth line? 
And then Josh Anderson, man, is still absolutely just in the fucking dumps. Man, all right. Um, this is taking a long time, but we are. See, like now we're a conservative buyer. We were a seller to begin the season. We weren't even a conservative seller. We were just a seller. And now we're a conservative buyer, and I don't know how I feel about that. I really wanted a good draft pick this year, man. This draft is actually pretty decent compared to ones of the years past, I feel like. Okay, so Arbor Zheka, what kind of uh, what kind of stuff do you have? Like this guy. This is the guy I was talking about earlier where there's like random add-in players. Like I think this – because this guy's 18, and he's American, and he's on the AHL team, and he's 5'8", 148. That doesn't sound like a real player. So I feel like um, – where the hell's Arbor Jacka, bro? So I feel like there's some at random added players that this guy, whoever created this roster, just uh, decided to put together. Caden Gooley's up to a 77. I think, wasn't he a 75 like a month ago? I mean, Norlander grew too. Norlander's a fucking minus 10, though. Holy shit. That's wild. Like, we might have to do... Baron's up to a... Baron's up too. Like, Ghoulie's a plus. Harris. Harris and Baron work really well together. Wow. Plus 19 and 20. I don't want to mess that chemistry up. But I might do this just to see if Norlander cannot be such a minus. Okay. Um. Oh wait. Actually, can, let me... Give me Arbor Zheka. Tell me if it's our lineup. He doesn't. Damn. So there might not be a spot on the team for him right now. I mean, we could do this... There we go. Actually, that might work. Sorry to Green or whatever his name was, but maybe Arbor Zheka can help Norlander out a little bit. Uh, maybe throw Norlander on the right side, help him out. But Yeah, let's check our top end guys, see how they're doing. Slavkovsky, yeah, he's fine on points. He's a big plus. I like that. Heinemann's up uh, overall point. Um, Schnarr's a plus. I think he was a minus last month. I think that's why we originally moved him for... Okay. Okay. The question now is what the heck do we do, man? What do we do? Because we are legitimately in the playoffs, but one bad month sends us down an absolute platoon. I mean, if you just look, I mean, 12 points. Of course, they have two games at hand, but it's only 12 points from us to sixth in the division. And then another 12 points to the seventh in the Metro, a little bit more than that for the Central, but wow, Pacific is cracked this year too, but see, six points separates one through seven, like it's super tight this year, aside from like those bottom end teams of the Avalanche, Blackhawks, and really that's it, other than that, it's pretty close up and down the board, which is why I really don't know what to do, because one bad month gets us an excellent draft pick. Huh. Damn, what do I do? Huh. I'm going to pull the trigger on a trade. I'm going to do something. I'm going to get rid of... <sighs> Monahan, maybe? I think we might get rid of Monahan now. Um, he should have pretty good trade value right now. He has uh, having a good year. Some teams should hopefully want him... Let's see what we can get for him, though. Um, yeah, we have a couple of days until our next game, so I'm going to simulate just a couple of days myself here. Jordan Harris resigned. Excellent. Sean Monahan resigned. And some. Okay, okay Pizzetta did. That's fine. Whatever. It was just some random shit I was doing because I was sitting here. But I am going to propose trade and see if we can find something for Sean Monahan right now and kind of ride that wave out for the rest of the year. Uh, he's a center. I don't know if this is the right decision. The playoffs honestly might be the right decision this late into the year. But we're going to see, like, the Ducks, that's fine. The Ducks are in the West. They're a good team. They're a buyer. This is a legitimate person that they would want to pick up at this time of year. Let's just see what we can get back from them. Okay? Um, and then we get into the guys that, okay. So we just have to hope that this fits the cap stuff. Um, but we're just going to take their worst, yeah, over the salary cap. 
I don't really want to retain any money, that's the thing. But we do know now that we might be able to get a second round pick for him. I doubt we could get a second round pick from the Blackhawks, who are very bad this year. But we can try. They do want to give up their second, but it is right now. But, 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 but. See, as you can see here, we have two firsts as well. But as, I'd be perfectly willing, maybe even a fifth. We might even be able to get away for a, with a fifth from the Flames to make this go through. Nah, that's not going to be enough. There's no way. Yeah. So maybe a fourth, because I would be perfectly okay with this. I would be perfectly okay with, since we have three fourth round picks already this year to begin with, I would be perfectly okay with, okay, fuck, I wanted to add that, whatever. I would be perfectly okay with adding a fourth in here. So basically, we pick up a, we, a fourth round pick from the Vegas Golden Knights where we already have three fourths. So we're not losing anything. The only thing we're gaining here is cap space and a second round pick in a year where we have two firsts a second, a third, and three fourths and two fifths. So I would be perfectly fine if this went through. And it does. Let's go. Okay, so the team did get a little worse there. It did get a little worse. But, 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 but. I don't. <clears throat> we're in such a weird spot right now, man. We really are. What am I even doing? Why am I in. Here. We're in such a weird spot where I just don't know what. We're just in such a weird spot that I don't really know what to do. And, I mean, I might, I'm just going to throw Michael Pozzetta in there because, I mean, why not? He's 76, he's 24, medium bottom six. I'm just going to give him the chance. I mean, I don't expect anything out of him. But I'm just going to give him the chance, give him a run. Um, I mean, Pitlick is doing everything. I don't know how much this trade will actually affect us. The top six is going to keep performing the same way they were, probably. Um... But, I mean, we're just going to let it rock. I don't know. We'll see how this trade affects us. I am very happy with that trade, to be honest. Um, we didn't. We lost Monaghan, who we were going to give up anyway. And in a year that right now we're doing a little bit more, doing a little bit better than I would like, I was fine giving him up a, a month early just to see how the team does now without him. And then once we get to the deadline, I'm st I think I'm still going to dish Dadanov. And then just whatever happens from there, I think is going to happen, guys, because it is what it is at that point. See the kind of run we go on now. We're 26. We're 11 games above 500, and I don't know. One bad run, and it sends us into a good draft spot. And if Florida goes a bad run, we have two lottery picks, two second-round picks, a third, and then two fourths and two fifths still. I gave up that fourth, but we really didn't lose anything. I know I keep saying that, but... I feel like that trade really worked out for us. Let me know what you guys think, if anybody's watching this. I doubt anybody made it this far in the video. But let me know what you think, and we will, um, I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, we're going to sim this month, see how the team does, and take it from there, I guess. All right, guys, so another month down and another month of us performing well above our weight. So this it looks like we went 2-2. Two and two. And then didn't lose another game in regulation. So we started two and two, four and two, four two one. So we went four two and one, and then so we went six two and one that month to lead us to thirty three eighteen and nine. And we are not even trying to win games right now, man. We right now are third in the division by we almost have a playoff spot locked up at this point, guys. Like. We traded away Sean Monahan, and we somehow got better. We didn't bring anything in. We went from an 82 overall Sean Monahan to a 74 rated or 76 rated Michael Pizzetta, the grinder, and it seemingly has done nothing to our performance. I mean, this first line is still performing well. They're, I mean, they're performing so well. I just, I don't want to run the risk of anything altering this. I mean, 52 points for Cole Caulfield in his age 22 season. Suzuki's 23. Dvorak is 27. Like, I don't want to do anything. It's going to be a really big pain now to have to pay Cole Caulfield. But it is what it is at this point. I mean, Pitlick's even doing well now, or doing better. I mean, 
Gallagher's a minus player now, but clearly that's not stopping the team from performing. Like, how did Pizzetta do? Pizzetta was a minus three, but the team was still winning. And I don't... I, I've said this a million times, but I don't really know what else to do. At this point, I feel like we have to push for the playoffs. I mean, is it like Jake Allen? Is he... I mean, he's doing okay, but it's just our offense, I guess, has been good. Like, I don't... I don't really know. At this point, we're in a spot. Um, obviously, we're not going to be seeing more of this um, in this episode for the season. We're going to end this episode here. But, I mean, guys, anybody who's watching this, let me know what you want us to do. Because I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, at the start of next episode, when we get to April 1st, um, we will take a look at the draft board. I don't know. I mean, we can look at the draft board before we sim to see what you guys want us to do at the deadline. But yeah, guys, let me know what you want us to do at the deadline because I have absolutely no idea what to do at this deadline. We are 15 games above 500. I think it might be out of the question for us to get a even top 10 pick. I feel like even if we tried did our best, traded away every bottom six, traded away Galley, traded away Dadanov, traded away Anderson and Hoffman, I feel like at worst we finish in like that 12, 13, 14 spot because, I mean, we're third in the division, but what are we in the league? Like, I want to see what we are in the league. We're third in the division, but fourth in the league. Like, our division is so good this year. It's insane. We're third in the division. Excuse me. But we are fourth in the whole league. That's insane. That is absolutely insane, man. I mean, Florida, Florida's 10th now. We do have their first round pick, so we do have two firsts, but Florida's in the playoffs right now. If they somehow were able to fall out of it, that would be huge for us. But, I mean, I feel like we just have to make the playoff push at this point and just let it ride, let the young guys get some experience at this point. But, I mean, we could, at the end of the day, if somebody in the top, like, six or seven wants to trade their first round pick um, come draft day, we could, of course, give up, like, I don't know, say they want, like, Hoffman or something. We could give them Hoffman, one of our later firsts, since we already have two, so we keep one. So we do, like, a first Hoffman and then, like, a third, a second or third, a second and third or something, whatever, like, and we need to get the push over the line and then go for something. But, I mean, let me know what you guys want us to do. I mean, focus on the deadline first. Let me know what you want me to do at the deadline in terms of buying or selling guys, who and what. Um, I mean, we can take a look at that, the trade block in the start of that episode. Um, so if you want to see that, come check out the Twitch. Um, you could be here, be my number two guy, be my assistant general manager, and help me make those decisions. But yeah, guys, I don't know what else to do i mean like if we were in the west we would be first in the conference we would literally be winning the conference right now so that's insane to think about but yeah guys i don't know what else to do um i don't know but i'm gonna end it here thank you so much for checking out the video for hanging out however much you watched however far you made it i can almost promise that nobody made it to this point but for anybody who did check out the video just put it out there i do greatly appreciate you and if you liked and subscribed um, I even appreciate you even more. It does mean a lot to me. I do enjoy making these videos, playing the game, and doing all that stuff. But it means a lot to me when people come and hang out and uh, check out the content and stuff. We're trying to improve. We're trying to get better every single day on here. But, yeah, that is where I'm going to leave you. Please leave a bunch of comments letting me know what you guys would like to do. And I will see you all very soon for Episode 2, where it looks like we might be playing in the playoffs. Um... But yeah, regardless of where we end, we will take episode two up to draft day, or up to the draft, the week of the draft, whatever, um, but we're not going to do the draft, so we'll have a separate video for the off season. but yeah, let me know what you guys want me to do. Thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Much love to anybody who did, and yeah, see you all very soon for episode two, but until then, take care of yourselves. Peace out.